Hello again, it's Miss Jennifer here at Braum. This time, we are going to recreate the ancient golden sarcophagus of King Tut of Egypt. We'll be using a black crayon or oil pastel, blue and red crayons or colored pencils, and if you have gold paint, that would be wonderful. If you don't have gold paint, you can still add some bling with glitter glue or even cut scraps of aluminum foil from the kitchen. Let's learn some more now about ancient Egypt burial traditions and King Tut's tomb. Deep in Egypt's Valley of the Kings, archeologist Howard Carter in 1922 made an amazing discovery. He found the hidden tomb of King Tutankhamun. Tut became Pharaoh or King of Egypt at only nine years old and died at the young age of 19. But his tomb was filled with many amazing glimmering objects that his culture believed he would use in the afterlife. Join me now as we recreate one of the golden sarcophagus of King Tut. So for your King Tut sarcophagus project today, we're going to need a piece of medium to heavy weight paper, either colored pencils or crayons, especially the colors red and blue, a black crayon or black oil pastel to draw with, and then for a special touch, some gold or metallic paint. I will begin by folding my paper hot dog style or along the length of the paper in half. I match my corners and then press. I'm going to open it up now and bring each edge back into the center. To have four equal tall rectangles like this. This is going to be our guide for drawing the sarcophagus and our hieroglyphics. You can go ahead and flatten the paper back out a little bit. You don't need that to stay folded while you're working. It's just a guide. So all of our drawing for the sarcophagus is going to start in this third section from the left. We are going to draw half of the sarcophagus outline. Then I'm going to show you a trick to fold it in half and rub to make your drawing symmetrical. Watch how I do that. So I'm starting near, but not all the way at the top of the paper, about a finger width or two down. And I'm going to make a line across halfway to this next fold, another line parallel, and a line down to connect them. Now I'm going to draw an upside down J starting at the center fold and coming down like this. Now I'm going to draw half of a U shape, another vertical line, and connect these two. Now for the shoulder, I'm going to make a small curve to this crease. And it's easier to go ahead and start at the foot now. So I'm going to make a line all the way across this folded section, then bring it almost all the way back with a triangular or V shape. And now I'm going to connect these two places to connect the shoulder to the foot of the sarcophagus. I want to make an eye shape, so I'm going to make a rainbow with a smile underneath. I'm going to leave this extra line hanging. In the Egyptian culture, 
the Royalty War Very Heavy Eyeliner. And then I'm going to make a small line here for the mouth and a line very close to that fold for the nose. I'm also going to add a dark eyebrow here. And now I am ready to fold and rub to get the other half of my design. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to fold my paper back in half and you can either rub with your finger or if you have something like a marker that you can use with the cap on to rub pressing very hard what you just drew with your oil pastel or black crayon should transfer to the other side of your paper making an almost exact mirror image of your drawing and that's a great way to do a symmetrical drawing like the sarcophagus wow that worked great so now i have the head the headdress and the body shape of my sarcophagus now i can get to work um, decorating i could draw the arms crossed in front if i wanted to with um, some special objects inside or i can just start doing some patterns and colors king tut's headdress has a series of lines going across. I think I'm going to go ahead and trace these other crayon lines while I'm thinking about it before I get too far with my designs. So now I can add my design elements, a lot of pattern and repetition this. Anything I do on this side, I'm going to repeat on this side. Now I'm going to do the two snake shapes at the top of his headdress and make these lines radiate around to join the patterns on the side. Before I add color, I'm going to draw some hieroglyphics on the sides of my design. You can use a hieroglyph generator like the ones that I've linked in the lesson plan today to find out how to write your own name or any other special words in hieroglyphs. So I went ahead and typed in the letters of Jennifer. So now I'm going to draw those in a cartouche, which is a long upside down U with kind of a foot at the end, like so. The J is kind of a serpent or snake-like shape. The E is a bent arm. The ends are zigzags. The I is a feather shape. The F is a different kind of snake. I think this is a viper. And again, an E, which is a bent forearm with the hand. 
and lastly the R, just kind of an empty eyeball shape. You try making hieroglyphics of your name. Over here I'm going to do a special word. I think today I will do peace. Now I'm ready to add color. I'm going to start by using red, blue, and kind of a turquoise color. Those were very commonly the colors of inlaid glass that decorated sarcophagus, such as the one belonging to King Tut. So I'm gonna use those for most of my pattern, remembering to keep a lot of space available for my special gold embellishments. You can use paint, gold crayons, gold markers, or if you don't have any of those things, you could cut small pieces of aluminum foil for some bling. So I'm going to color the headdress in an ABC pattern with these three colors. You'll see I've left a lot of white spaces between my colors. That's to leave room for my gold embellishments. I'm going to very carefully start to fill in those spaces with my gold paint. 